This section will focus on an introduction to the major catalytic strategies that enzymes use to mediate their reactions, and will focus on serine proteases, specifically chymotrypsin, as an example of four of these strategies. So there are seven major catalytic strategies that enzymes use to catalyze reactions. These are covalent catalysis, acid-base catalysis, electrostatic catalysis, desolvation, catalysis by approximation, strain distortion, and cofactor catalysis. We will take a look at examples of each of these types of catalytic strategies. Our serine proteases that will be our first enzymatic example actually use a combination of four of these strategies. Serine proteases use a combination of covalent catalysis, acid-base catalysis, electrostatic catalysis, and desolvation. So let's define these in a little more detail before we look at the specific example. Covalent catalysis involves the formation of a covalent bond between the enzyme and at least one of the substrates involved in the reaction. This usually uses a nucleophile. Acid-base catalysis is involved in any reaction mechanism that requires the transfer of a proton from one molecule to another. It's very common to see acid-base catalysis combined with covalent catalysis. And in fact, this is what we'll see in our example of chymotrypsin. This is because many nucleophiles are activated by the removal of a proton. This includes alcohol, thiol, and amine functional groups. Electrostatic catalysis occurs when an enzyme active site stabilizes the transition state of the reaction by forming electrostatic interactions with the substrate. The electrostatic interactions can be ionic, ionic dipole, dipole-dipole, or hydrophobic interactions. Hydrogen bonding is one of the most common electrostatic interactions that's formed within the active sites. And desolvation. Enzyme active sites can become devoid of water and mimic the reaction characteristics of the gas phase. This can destabilize the polarized state of charge groups such as acids and bases. Thus, the neutral form of these types of residues becomes favored within the active site. This is due to significant alterations of the pKa's of the active site residues within the nonpolar environment. The serine protease family of enzymes that mediates the hydrolysis of proteins into smaller peptide units is going to serve as our example for this section. We have already talked about the activity of two serine proteases, trypsin and chymotrypsin, during our discussion of techniques used to study proteins. The active site of this family of enzymes contains a catalytic triad that consists of an acid, aspartic acid in fact, a base, histidine, and a nucleophile, in this case serine. The serine residue is the position where the enzyme forms a covalent linkage with the substrate and is the reason that this protein class is named the serine proteases. We will learn about the detailed reaction mechanism of the chymotrypsin enzyme as our example. This diagram shows an overview of the chemistry that is occurring at the active site of the chymotrypsin enzyme. Overall, the reaction starts with the peptide to be cleaved entering into the active site. So this diagram only shows the peptide bond. The rest of the protein is listed as the R functional groups here. The catalytic triad of the enzyme is shown here. The aspartic acid coordinates with the histidine residue, enabling the histidine residue to abstract a proton from the alcohol functional group of serine 195. This enables the serine oxygen to serve as a nucleophile and mediate attack on the carbonyl carbon of the protein that's going to be cleaved. It forms an oxyanion intermediate. 
that is the transition state of the reaction. You can see the oxygen forming the anion right here. This is called the oxyanion. This is normally the carbonyl oxygen. The oxyanion is stable by electrostatic interactions with the backbone of the protein. This is called the oxyanion hole within the protein. We will discuss this in more detail within the next few slides. As the electrons from the oxyanion rebound in to reform the carbonyl, the amide bond or the peptide bond will be cleaved and the nitrogen component will serve as the leaving group. This half of the peptide is then released and floats away from the active site of the enzyme. So once this half of the peptide floats away from the active site, you can see that the carbonyl portion of the peptide is still attached covalently with the serine residue of the enzyme. However, the other half of the protein leaving the active site enables water to enter the active site as well. Water is going to act as a nucleophile and the oxygen will attack the carbonyl carbon of the peptide that's bound to the active site serine residue. This will form the oxyanion intermediate again and the electrons will then rebound back in to reform the carbonyl. This time, the serine oxygen is going to be the leaving group. This restores the enzyme and releases the final product, which can leave the active site. The enzyme is then ready for another round. Okay, so that's a lot for a single slide. Let's slow down and look at this in a little more detail. Here is a model of the chymotrypsin enzyme shown in blue with the catalytic residues shown in green. The histine 57 residue and aspartic acid 102 residue participate in the acid-base dynamics of the reaction, while serine 195 serves as the active site nucleophile and forms the covalent intermediate with the protein substrate. When the protein that will be cleaved by the enzyme enters the active site, aspartate 102 abstracts a proton from the histidine residue in the acid-base component of the reaction mechanism. This step also uses desolvation. When the protein to be cleaved enters the active site, it takes up all the active site space and excludes water from the active site. This creates a dehydrated microenvironment, which causes the pKa's of the active site residues to shift, increasing the pKa of aspartic acid. So instead of acting as an acid and donating its proton, it essentially is going to act like a base and it's going to be able to accept the proton from the histidine, which normally acts as the base, but now is going to act more like an acid, at least with our aspartate. This enables the histidine to abstract a proton from the serine residue in the active site and the activated alcohol oxygen can then attack the carbonyl carbon of the substrate, mediating the nucleophilic attack. The electrons from the pi bond in the carbonyl carbon oxygen bond shift up to the oxygen, creating the oxyanion intermediate. Here is the oxyanion. This stage begins the covalent catalysis component of the reaction you can see that serine 195 is now covalently attached to the substrate. This is also the transition state of the reaction. Stabilization of this transition state is what lowers the activation energy and makes this a good enzyme. So the oxyanion transition state is stabilized by electrostatic interactions, specifically hydrogen bonding with the backbone residues. This stabilization area on the enzyme is called the oxyanion hole, and it represents the electrostatic interactions component of the reaction mechanism. From here, the electrons from the oxyanion rebound in and reform the carbonyl functional group. This overloads the carbon atom with five bonds and causes the carbon-nitrogen bond to break. The electrons from the bond abstract a proton from the histidine residue. The first product of the reaction can then leave the active site. 
The carbonyl side of the protein still remains attached to the serine 195. After the first product leaves the catalytic site of the enzyme, this creates enough space for water to enter the active site. The water interacts electrostatically with serine 195 and histidine 57 and is positioned such that the oxygen can act as a nucleophile at the carbonyl carbon center forming a covalent bond. The histidine bonds with the proton from the water molecule and the oxyanion intermediate forms for a second time. The electrons from the oxyanion rebound a second time back in to reform the carbonyl and this time the serine oxygen is the leaving group for the reaction. The electrons from this bond capture the proton from the water molecule that's being coordinated by the histidine residue. This reforms the serine residue and the histidine residue. The second product leaves the active site of the enzyme. The enzyme active site is restored and ready for another round of catalysis. Thus, the serine protease catalytic mechanism utilized acid-base catalysis, desolvation, covalent catalysis, and electrostatic interactions to complete protein hydrolysis. Section 7.3 will continue in the next lecture where we will discuss another strategy that enzymes use to mediate reactions.